I'm Mark Learmonth, Caledonia Mining's CFO, and I'd like to run you through our corporate presentation. What you see here on the on the title page is um, a picture of the the new headgear at the central shaft, which um, we um, we put up we put that headgear up um, late last year, and it started running a few weeks ago. So we're very very proud, very excited of that. Probably the biggest engineering project in Zimbabwe for many years. There's the disclaimer. Right, the um, our strategy is focused around sort of four, four aspects. The first is the having finished the central shaft, which I'll talk about in a moment, is now converting that into production, increased production, uh, and increased cash generation. And the increased production will be increasing production from about 58,000 ounces, which we did in 2020. This year in 2021, we'll do something in the mid 60s. Um, and then from 2022 onwards, we'll be doing about 80,000 ounces a year out to 2034. Uh, over many years, we've committed, uh, we, we've demonstrated our commitment to return money to shareholders by way of dividends. And as you'll see in a moment, over, over recent quarters, we've now started to increase our dividend, not only as a result of the higher share price, but also as our increasing um, confidence about the business as we finish the central shaft. And then in addition to um, getting more money out of blanket, we're now beginning to evaluate some, um, some new um, exploration opportunities, which we've secured in Zimbabwe. So just by way of an overview on Caledonia Mining, we're an established profitable gold producer based in the, in the south of, um, of Zimbabwe, around Gwanda. Um, we also have two exploration option agreements uh, in, the, in the Zimbabwe Midlands around Gweru. Uh, that's an area that's historically produced very significant amounts of gold. We're domiciled in Jersey, Channel Islands, which means that the holding company is tax neutral, um, but we're listed on the NYSE American and on AIM in London, and by far the biggest... Um, the biggest volume, about 100,000, perhaps 115,000 shares a day is on, um, on, on the American, Nazi American. Uh, at the end of December, we had uh, just under $21 million, just under $19 million in cash. And don't forget that does include uh, the proceeds of a, um, of a $12.5 million equity raise we did in mid-2020 mid to raise funds for a solar project, which we've only just now started spending. So that cash position does, does reflect uh, cash that we're holding for a specific purpose. And we're a P of seven on our, on our, on our adjusted annualized Q4 um, 2020 earnings. Last year's earnings were about $100 million. And as I've said, this year's production guidance is somewhere in the mid, in the mid 60,000 ounces. I've mentioned our dividend. Uh, we've been paying a dividend since a quarterly dividend since about 2012. And then more recently, we've started to increase it. So we, we, we increased the dividend in January 2020 from six and seven eighths. US cents per share to seven and a half cents a share. Um, we kept it at seven and a half cents a share in um, April last year because of the onset of the coronavirus. We just didn't feel it appropriate to increase the dividend um, whilst we appraised the, the effect of, of the coronavirus on our business. Actually, there was no effect. Um, and then we increased it to um, eight and a half cents, uh, then 10 cents, uh, 11 cents in January. And the dividend we've just paid a few weeks ago in April was at 12 cents a share. So that puts us on, a, on an annualized yield of about 3.2%. And this, what we show on this graph is, um, is a data plot of the constituents, the GDXJ, who actually pay a, pay a dividend. And we're plotting the, uh, the dividend yield against the, uh, the Bloomberg consensus growth forecast for two years. And you can see that Caledonia Mining is something of an outlier in that it's got a, a respectable yield. We're not by, we're by no means the highest yield, but we're, we're respectable, um, but a significantly higher uh, compound growth rate than most other gold producers. So we think that's a useful, a very interesting and quite attractive uh, combination for investors of, um, of yield and growth. But we have a corporate overview, our share price graph on the left-hand side. We, our share price did run up very strongly in the middle of last year. Uh, Partly, we think, because of the, the higher gold price mid-year. Um, we're also included in the Russell 3000 index, which gave rise to some, um, some buying. When it reached its peak of about $25, $26 a share, that implied um, a discount rate of about 1% on our um, future cash flows, which is clearly too low for a single asset producer in Zimbabwe. The share price has now come down to about $14 a share, which implies a, a discount rate of about 14 to 15%, which we think puts us back into into competitive, um, competitive pricing territory. By way of shareholders, uh, management and directors have got about 4%. Uh, Alan Gray is a large uh, South African institutional fund manager. They've got 16%. Uh, 
uh, Sales Promotion Services is a, an individual based, a private investor based in, um, in, in Liechtenstein. He's got uh, 5%. For Miro, that was a group, that is a group of Zimbabwe investors who were previously a minority shareholder in Blanket. We bought them out and moved them up to the top co level. So they've got 6%. And BlackRock are in there with 5% as a passive investor um, by virtue of the Russell 3000 index. Our market cap at the, at the early in March was about $175 million. Uh, we have 12 million shares in issue, virtually no options. Um, and as I mentioned, cash about 19 million at the end of December and no, and no cash, uh, no, no debt, no debt. Just turning to um, ESG, uh, we, are, uh, we fully comply with our obligations in respect of um, corporate governance um, and ethical and responsible business behavior. So we've got, um, we've, for many years, we've got the, the full suite of uh, corporate governance. Um, health and safety is front and center of what we do. Um, 99% of the workers at the mine are Zimbabwean, uh, so we don't uh, run the mine using expensive expats. And it's fair to say, it also should be noted that 10% um, of the mine itself is owned by a trust for the benefit of the um, for the benefit for, benefit for the benefit of the workers. In terms of community relations, we've got excellent relations with the community, and they also own a further 10% of the um, of the mine. And we operate the highest environmental um, standards. And we're, we're in the process now of preparing our initial, our inaugural uh, ESG report, which should be um, should be released later on this year. Uh, just a few words on COVID. It had no effect on um, on production either last year or this year. Uh, in fact, last year was a record production level. We 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 imposed quite um, quite quite strict uh, lockdown measures on the mine on the mine village, um, and to date. We've only had 38 known infections of coronavirus amongst our employees and their dependents. Not, not, none of those gave rise to any serious um, illness. So although there was no effect on, um, on production, there was a minor effect on costs and then about a six month delay on the, on the capital project on, on Central Shaft and, and due to uh, delays in, in moving equipment and people from South Africa up to the mine and back again. But that's now behind us because the, the Central Shaft, as you're about to hear, was commissioned in, um, in March. So we've, we've got through that. And just by way of a case study, what you see here is, the, uh, is a clinic, the, the Fakama clinic that we, we built at a cost of about $460,000. And uh, it's an isolation clinic uh, for the benefit of the local community. And that was handed over in January this year and is, is currently being used. Uh, we're also embarking on a, a solar project. For the, the only really significant operational difficulty in Zimbabwe is the electricity supply. Um, it's subject to outages and load shedding, um, and also subject to um, surges in the voltage, which damages our equipment. And so when that happens, either of those happen, we, we, end, we have to run um, the gensets. We've got 18 megawatts of installed genset capacity, which means that we can run everything everything uses the gen sets, but it is expensive, it's environmentally damaging, and it's logistically quite challenging to get, get your hands on large amounts of, um, of diesel at very short notice in, in the place where we are. So to try and mitigate some of those risks, um, the mid, 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 late, mid, last, mid last year, we um, decided to embark on a, a solar project uh, that will produce about um, 12 megawatts, uh, the cost of about, a, a capital cost of about $12.5 million, which will provide about 27% of Blanket's total daily electricity usage. Uh, and that's, that's now in the procurement phase. So we're spending, we're spending, we're now beginning to spend the, the, the $12.5 million that we raised last year, we're beginning to spend that now. And it should be operational by about, by about this time next year. Right, turning to the central shaft, which is the engine of our near-term growth. Um, what we've done is we've, we've invested since, since about 2015, we've um, invested about $67 million sinking a six meter diameter four compartment shaft from surface down to 1200 meters. Um, that was commissioned right at the end of March and is now hoisting uh, waste on a commercial basis. Um, that's development waste arising from the horizontal development needed to connect the, the bottom of the shaft to the production areas. But even the process of, of lifting the waste has now relieved the pressure from the other shaft uh, which can um, now focus on, um, on, on hoisting, hoisting ore. So already it's, it's playing a part in contributing to the um, incremental production from the mine. And this is a long section of the mining area. So what you see here from left to right is, um, that's the mine area. So that's about three kilometers. Um, 
the green infrastructure that you see there, that's the infrastructure that we was there when we, we bought this mine off Kinross in 2006. So that's a, a the main shaft is the number four shaft, which goes down to 750 meters below surface. And that has horizontal development um, uh, to the left. Now, you, 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 this mine's been running since, 2000, since, since 1907. So it comes as no surprise that um, many areas have now been worked out, worked out. And all those dark gray areas, they're, they're, the, they're the areas that have been worked out. And you can see quite clearly that the, the green infrastructure gives you access to an awful lot of fresh air and not an awful lot of, uh, of uh, reserves or resources. So to mitigate that, we've we sunk the central shaft. That's the big red thing down the middle, down to um, 1,200 meters. That shaft is now sunk. It's operational. And a lot of the horizontal developments we have already started working from number four shaft. And so we're just now finishing off connecting that uh, development up to the central shaft itself so that it can now start to um, hoist um, waste and increasingly ore. Uh, so effectively what we've done is we've built a, a brand new mine underneath the old mine, which will allow us to access those deeper level resources, increase production, but also gives us the flexibility to undertake more deep level exploration, which hopefully should allow us to extend the mine life out beyond the current horizon of 2034. We're also, as I mentioned, looking at some new opportunities in Zimbabwe. There's two. The first is Connemara North. So you can see on the map here, uh, Glen Hume and Connemara. They're both reasonably, relatively close together, about 30 kilometers from each other in the in the middle of middle of Zimbabwe. Connemara North. We have uh, an 18 month um, uh, option period, so that takes us out to May uh, 2022, which gives us the right to explore. And if we like what we see, then to exercise the option and pay a further $5 million to, um, to get access to the, to, to actually own the property outright. That property was part of a package that was previously owned by uh, First Quantum, uh, which was um, placed on care and maintenance in 2001 and subsequently disposed of in 2003, not because, not because of any concerns over the, the quality of the asset, it was because of the increase, the, the, the deteriorating situation in Zimbabwe, which um, caused First Quantum to um, sell up and move on. So we're very optimistic that um, the Connemara will will show some some reasonable resource which we can commercialise. The second is slightly different. That's um, an existing operation and which operates on a very small scale, almost um, advanced artisanal basis. That's called Glen Hume. Again, it's the same structure and option agreement to give us the right to go exploring. This is for 15 months and expires in February 2022. Uh, we made an upfront payment of um, two and a half million. And if we um, exercise, that's a further two and a half million to pay to, to own the asset with a 1% NSR. It covers about 358 hectares. And it's already producing on a small scale, as I mentioned. Um, so again, we know there's gold there and uh, we're now busy. We've, we've done the first phase of drilling and we're now busy evaluating, um, ev evaluating those results. In terms of CSR, um, we, we have a, a formal CSR policy at the mine, uh, focused on the areas of education, health, agriculture, environment, and uh, the empowerment of women, women and youth. Um, and as I said, the, uh, the workers own 10% and the community own 10% of the mine. And we will be publishing our inaugural um, CSR statement later on, later on this year. So in terms of outlook, uh, you should be looking for an, a significant increase in production from now up to 2022. Uh, that will give rise, we expect, to higher cash flows as a result of higher production, uh, lower unit costs, and uh, reducing capex from 20 to 2022 onwards. We're now able to do deep, deep level exploration at the mine, which we hope will allow us to extend the current life of mine beyond 2034. We've got our hands on um, some new exploration properties in Zimbabwe, Glen Hume and Connemara, and we continue to look at um, some other properties as well, where we can invest some of the surplus cash that comes out of blanket surplus in the sense of we've already demonstrated a commitment to return money to shareholders and we expect that to continue so it's a question of sharing the the incremental cash that comes out of blanket part going part of that increase going to shareholders and part of it going into the ground for um, for new assets and our contact information is here we're reasonably accessible uh, by email or by uh, by probably preferably by email to answer, answer any queries. In terms of research in the UK, research is available from WH Ireland and North America research is available from Cantor Fitzgerald. So thank you very much.